So far you've seen us package up freeze-dried food. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about how we get started. I have a silicone mat and a tray that goes into our freeze dryer. I like the silicone mats so far. They work very well. Some people don't like them. They think they get smelly or stained. I haven't found that to be a problem. There's a lot of ways you can go about cleaning these if you have some odor or stains that happen on them and perhaps I'll show that later. Because it's a general cleaning process that you can use in your kitchen or many other places in your house. I have some thin spaghetti that I cooked up last night. I cooked extra so that I could actually go about this process of extra hydrating the pasta. Now what we do is, at least this is the theory, I cook the pasta to where it's the way we like it. It has that kind of a bit of a resistance to your bite, but it's still completely done. I put this thin spaghetti in the refrigerator with a lot of water, water that would fill up over the top of the spaghetti. Now the idea about this comes from another person who's doing freeze drying on YouTube, and that is you're trying to get extra water into that noodle so that when you freeze it, it creates large ice crystals in the pasta. I don't know if that's going to work or not. This is an experiment, and we're going to take you along in the process. This spaghetti is about two servings. It's swelled up a bit. It might be we can get three servings out of this. I cut it up so that it's smaller than normal. You could break it before you cook it, but we prefer in general to have our spaghetti whole. This is really the only time that I'm planning on making the spaghetti smaller than normal length. Irene's down in the studio. She's working on a couple of special projects. I'm up here taking care of some food. I have some chicken out that I'm going to cook for lunch today, or at least that's the plan. Now I need to go get this in the freeze dryer. I have a lid. The reason why we have these lids is it makes it easier to stack it in our freezer. And I just don't like the idea of raw food or even food that's been pre-cooked sitting on the shelf in the freezer. I don't want it to absorb any freezer smells or anything like that. I just want it to be ready to go. Well, let's go put this in the freezer. It's time to put this spaghetti into the deep freeze. I already have three trays stacked, four trays stacked up in here. This will make the fifth, so if we wanted to run another batch in two days, we could do it. I just slide the tray with the top on into the freezer. I have some strawberries. Put it on top and close her up. When we have time, we can go ahead and freeze dry the food that's in this freezer. It will be at least one experiment for the thin spaghetti that I just showed you. And we have some other things in there that I know will work just fine, so we'll be doing those as well. One of the things that we're doing is we're trying a lot of different things to see what we like. Just because something works, that is, it freeze dries, doesn't mean we're going to like it. So far, we found we love the freeze dried strawberries. We cut them up from fresh, put them on the trays, put them in the deep freeze, then put them in the freeze dryer. Really simple. A little disappointed in the apples. They're a cosmic sweet apple. Not super sweet, but sweet. The flavor came out to be okay. They're perfectly edible. They'll be great for snacks in the truck when we're going to events, but 
they're not quite what I'm looking for, so I have a few ideas to try on that. You've seen us package up our freeze-dried product. What came out of the last one? Last time out of the freeze dryer. Freeze-dried ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, they're ice cream sandwiches. If you've ever had astronaut ice cream, that's what this is like. I took a half a dozen ice cream sandwich bars, cut them in half the length lengthwise, and then divided them into quarters going the opposite direction. We have three packages. The reason why we did three packages is really portion control. These were actually pretty good. Now I want to do some other things with ice cream, especially the ice cream that we make, because I can control the sweetness better. We have a bunch of freeze-dried apple slices. I split one apple into 16 slices, and then we froze them. They're crispy. We have freeze-dried watermelon. Several packages of this. It actually tastes pretty good. It's not exactly what you'd expect for watermelon because you don't have that kind of burst of juice, but you do get a big burst of flavor. A little different than the normal watermelon, but still good nonetheless. And we've set these up in resealable Mylar bags so you tear the top off, open it up, and we can snack on it. That's what we've done with all these packages because we don't want to eat them all at one time. We want to go ahead and be able to seal them back up. We have freeze-dried asparagus. We have several bags of this. It's delicious. Roast beef. Well, I cooked some eye round roasts. We ate uh, roast beef sandwiches. We uh, ate uh, hot roast beef. We ate hot roast beef with gravy that I made. And now we have the ability to try rehydrating some of our roast beef while we're traveling and see how that turns out. I think it's going to be just fine. All the other meat that I've tried has worked out well. More watermelon, more asparagus, and more apples. We have other things, but that's the really new stuff that came out of the freeze dryer. I have three large scale totes full of freeze dried food. And one of the things I have to do in the next couple of days is go through those totes so we can be ready for our upcoming trip.